to the You Can Do Both podcast. This is Court. And this is Ashley. And we're coming at you live from Boston for a very exciting interview podcast today. Interactive, if you will. Interactive, long-awaited interview with the founders of Cape Cotter, the You Can Do Both drink of the summer. Love it. We had so much fun with Will and Kevin. So we had them both on for not only just your typical interview, we did a taste test and we tried every single one of the Cape Cotter flavors. Yeah. So if you guys are familiar and you've seen us post about it, it is a canned cocktail company based out of Massachusetts, now in Newport. And we met these guys at the Boston Wine Expo, like back in February, a very spontaneous, a random G N. Girls, not a girls' night out. Girls, a girls' day out. GDO. Or you make I you love up something that. new. Yeah. <laughs> if you guys are OGs, you remember when we got last minute tickets to the Boston Wine Expo. Yes. And ever since we've been in love, and we've been sharing them with all of you. So this is your opportunity to get to know the men behind the brand. Honestly, it's a family business. There's a lot of people involved. Get to know all the flavors. And if you haven't yet tried them, this is your opportunity to pause the episode run out to your local convenience store, alcohol store, grocery store, find yourself a pack and try them alongside of us. Ideally, you will be having the variety pack. So they came out with one that has all four out of five of the flavors. So as you are watching today's episode on Spotify, we also highly recommend you watch on Spotify because this is the type of episode you're going to want to get the video for. And then as we go along through the taste test, you guys can try them. Yes. So get your roommates together, get your partner together, watch it together, and have a little day. Yes. And if you are listening to this on drop day morning, you know what? Just continue to listen to it. <laughs> That's true. We we, sh- we do not yeah. <laughs> encourage the taste test as you're working from home. Yes. But regardless, you're going to find a little bit of everything. Some education on the alcohol yes. industry. Like I literally learned not even as much. Of course, I learned a lot about their brand, but like about what I should be learning or thinking about when I consume other brands in the alcohol space. The The color. color. Who would have thought? (laughs) We kind of go all over the place with the alcohol industry. So even if you are not, I don't know. if Aspiring to be. Yeah. Whether you're, if you're a drinker or not, this episode's for you. Whether you're an entrepreneur or not, this episode's for you. Whether you just want to be inspired by a family business and story. Or, you know, just learn a bit about why we love the brand so much. This one's for you. So without further ado, Kevin and Will, founders of Cape Cotter, welcome to the You Can Do Both podcast. Let's start it off with a crack, shall we? Crack it. I'm a cracking. I already cracked mine. (laughs) That just flashed into my eye. Cheers. Congratulations. Uh, Cheers. Cheers. We love love. Love, love. Welcome to the You Can Do Bold podcast, Kevin and Will. We are so excited to finally have you guys on the pod. So we just gave a little bit of an intro background, how we know you, Mm -hmm. how we know the brand, but who are you guys? Give a little elevator pitch on yourselves as well as Cotter. Who are we? Lo- loaded question. <laughs> right? Oh, I'll, I mean, I'll, let you, I'll let you go first. I mean, well, Kevin and I are brother-in-laws uh, and, and really best buds. Uh, you know, Kev's, you know, military kid uh, from New England, uh, has been all over the place. I, I, I'm you know, born and raised outside of D.C., and um, we both are just good timers. I like to have a good time and keep having good times, and that's, that's the plan going forward. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Nothing really to add. I guess I... Uh, We're going to get more descriptive than that. I guess that. I agree with John. that, but uh, yeah... Uh, you know, him and I are the co-founders of Cape Cotter, and uh, we launched last year. Amazing. Yeah. And where did the idea even come from? I love answering this question because it's the most fun part about what we do. Um, I mean, really, Cape Cotter originated 32 years ago. So as we'll just kind of introduce, grew up in a military family. I'll give you the short version. <laughs> um, but required me to move a lot. Spent my summers in Dennisport on the Cape, and it really just became the constant in my life. And, uh, you know, every year spending summers there with my family, my friends. Naturally, my first alcoholic drink was poured by my grandfather, which happened to be a Cape Cotter. 
And, uh, you know, at the time, I didn't know what it was. I knew it was delicious. Wasn't, you know, wasn't really sure about the vodka back then. Cape Cod is really about, like, that moment. Maybe not that specific moment, but with family, in your favorite place, drinking your favorite drink. And it doesn't have to be on Cape Cod. So really, you know, what we wanted to bring to life was the feeling and resonate and build that lifestyle in the form of a drink. Yeah. And my Cape Cod is, is, uh, is outside of New England, uh, but it's the same feeling. Like, you know, you just want to be with your homies, yeah. family, yeah. friends, you know, pop something cold and, and uh, put the work emails away. So that's, that's kind of the, the idea behind the brand. Yeah. Love it. And you two both were in corporate America at one point, and mm-hmm. you decided to jump ship and take this on full time yeah. and do it with one another, mixing family with business, which is something that people typically say stray away from. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but what sparked that and for you two to become business partners? I mean, we, I, I think like every entrepreneur has like that backstory and everybody has ideas. I mean, Kevin and I, like we love booze. So that's one. Um, <laughs> yeah. Essential. And, you gotta be passionate about what you're yeah, selling. <laughs> t- totally. And you know, responsibly, of course. And, uh, but, but we also love ideas and we, we, we watch trends and, um, uh, we saw a lot of people just grabbing ready to drink canned drinks and, uh, and then more so we liked certain ready to drinks better than others. Ones that are spirits, ones that are all natural. Um, and then we love brands like cool brands, lifestyle brands, uh, that, that people get excited about. So yeah. we, we kind of started brainstorming from there and given his background, uh, found our way to you know, what's in front of us. To your point, uh, there's going to be so many people that tell you not to get into business with family or with and, your best friend or with your best friend. <laughs> yes, exactly. Which is family. Yeah. Um, you know, that being said, I, you know, I think it's important to share like, um, you know, getting into business with family is different. That person trusts you the most out of anybody. I mean, how this guy let me marry his sister. So <laughs> if, true, you know, if he didn't trust me enough to go into business together, you know, there would be problems. But I think, um, you know, it's important to establish that relationship um, first as a friend and, you know, as somebody that you bond with over, you know, shared values, shared beliefs and shared ideas. Um, and we did a lot of that for... I think eight years before uh, before one actually kind of stuck. Yeah, yeah, we, <laughs> yeah. Che- we checked in with each other too. Like <laughs> as we were going down this path, like each day has got gotten more and more serious, and like we learned more and more. Yeah, uh, and then we finally took that leap, and uh, it's been it's been totally awesome. And you always want to go into business with someone you trust, and like totally. uh, and um, Kevin and I, you know, have a great working relationship, and then we're friends on the side, and it's just it's been great. Yeah, that's amazing. So I also want you guys to talk about all of the cool partnerships and experiences that you've had this summer, because we've seen you guys everywhere. You've popped up at Granite Links. You guys are in Newport. You guys are on boat cruises. You guys appear to be so much more than just a product. It's truly a full brand. We want to hear about Peanut. We want to hear about all the fun little details so our audience can get to know more than just the canned cocktail they see in the store. (laughs) Well, Peanut is part of the family. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have to insert a, a photo of Peanut here, like yes. right here. Yes. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. She's with us in s- yeah. always. Yeah. You know? uh, well, first partnership I want to shout out is you guys. Cheers to you guys. Cheers, oh, cheers yeah. to you guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can't read guys. Clank, yeah. clank, drink, drink. Let's go. Can you tell they know how to have fun? <laughs> no, but I mean, I think... You know, from a partnership standpoint, uh, you described it perfectly. Um, Part of driving awareness to your brand is looking a lot bigger than you are. And being able to find the right partnerships and continue to elevate what you're doing is how you build a brand. And, uh, you know, I think year one, we we had some introductions into some partnerships um, with different boats, um, you know, different influencers that were happening organically. And then year two, we really doubled down and we tried to identify, like, uh, key areas where we need to drive consumer reception and how do we reach that audience. Um, so, you know, from a social standpoint, you know, we have a good partnership with Purely Boston. Jonathan's been awesome. He's doing a great series, like an MTV crib style series. Cocktails on boats. Perfect. There's nothing better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's called Boss Boats. <laughs> yeah, Boss it's Boats. Like, it's a totally boss program, so it's... <laughs> nice. You know, I think as far as partnerships go, like, you know, we try to develop really meaningful relationships that will get 
our brand in front of the consumer in their drinking occasions. So like our drinking occasions are, you know, by the pool, at the beach, at the bar, on the golf course, um, really anywhere. But those are like the key spots. And so like, you know, we, we, we start to just reach out to those, those uh, partners that have that great visibility because we ultimately want to reach the consumer yeah. and have them fall in love with the, with the brand, the drinks, and what we're doing. And, and to get to them, we just need kick-ass partners. Yeah, and I think so. to add to that, you know, so we're now, I guess, able to be consumed by air, land, and sea. I mean, we just partnered with an aviation company, Ooh. Tradewind Aviation. Uh, so we're the, the cocktail served on board. And basically Cruises, uh, we've been partnered with them for two years now. And then land, I mean, you name it, 350 different retailers across the state in Massachusetts and then 50 in Rhode Island. And then, you know, to build on kind of that awareness, really our partnership with Nantucket Island Marketing has been pivotal to our success and and how we reach the audience and how we target, you know, specific regions and, you know, our drinking occasions entirely. So shout out Renee and Marley on that. Yeah. Yeah. And and I'll stop for Pineapple Cruises. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Pineapple Cruises down in, in Newport, yeah. uh, Steve and, uh, and Beck, uh, they just are awesome people. They, they've got these four great, like five boats now, and they've got cotter flowing on every single one of those boat charters, and, um, and they're a ton of fun. So if anybody yeah. needs uh, a, a charter down in Newport at any point in time, holler at Pineapple uh, Cruises. Yeah, wedding, bachelorettes, bachelor yeah. parties. So yeah. yeah, highly recommend. Yeah. Yeah. Charcuterie board, <laughs> Chicory. white wine spritzes. <laughs> You're really capturing our target audience. Yeah, you're right going now. all the rides on that ride. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys are doing a really great job because we see you everywhere. I was even telling them, like, at my local corner store, which is just such a random, like, little shop. Like, the second I walk in, cotters are front piled up front and center. Like, yeah. and everyone, obviously, since you're the you can do bowl drink of the summer we have so many people asking us all day long like hey what's that drink i was like why don't you buy it and then they do and they're like oh my gosh they report back they love it like we have not introduced this brand and drink to one person that has not absolutely loved it it. so and wait you guys released a variety pack no Mm -hmm. Four, Uh, four different flavors three different spirits yeah and just as a shameless plug i mean that's it's about as healthy of a booze beverage that you're gonna have. It's <laughs> under 100 calories. You can do Gluten free, <laughs> not too sweet, not syrupy, yeah. not metallic, just a smooth drinker, porch pounders. And um, <laughs> you, know, you can have five or six, you don't get flavor fatigue. And you know, you can so go true. home and you know, hang out with your wife, deal with kids and not feel like you're leaning, you know? Yeah. So, but if you drink enough of them, they work. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay, another question we had for you guys. So you've had such an incredible summer. We've absolutely adored working with you both yep. and the brand same, as a whole. Um, what are some goals that you have for the upcoming year to finish out 2023 and then even next year? How long is this podcast? Yeah. <laughs> well, like 2023, like I think we've we've what we wanted to do was like level up and just the awareness of our brand to our consumers in our target market. So, and that's just business 101. And, you know, I think we've been able to get into over 300 stores, um, which has allowed us to get to our people. And, um, and then on top of that, just get sips to lips and cans in hands, which requires <laughs> as, sampling. As which sips are requi- to lips and cans <laughs> are in hands. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I mean, I think we've, you know, we've sold over, I think it's a little under a half a million cans. Um, since wow. we started and that's you know I think that's that's awesome you know you yeah. look at you know how quickly other brands have grown we're, we're right on track and you know to be a very successful brand and and we want to just continue to double down on that so next year you know continue to build that brand in New England um, you know the thoughts of, of Connecticut you know is, is something that is quickly on our mind and uh, and then just really growing that uh, consumer awareness and brand loyalty in those markets is that is that's our goal um uh, from like consumer perspective yeah I, I mean nothing really to add i mean next year is always the goal to to level up to continue to level up and you know continue to build accounts continue to build relationships and really just connect the dots i mean this industry it's a web and you know once you're starting to make progress it just progresses and it expands and i think you know, the opportunity to go to Connecticut, the opportunity to bring new SKUs and have market reception immediately. 
and just goes to show you the success we've built over the past two years. So I think we're all in, you know, goals for 2024 is we're just super excited to be in a position to be in 2024 yeah. and, and to have goals to strive towards and to continue to grow at the rate we are. And it all comes down to you guys, like people yeah. that are aware of us and like us and drink us. And then if they like us, then we're doing something right. Yeah. So. Well, congratulations yeah. because y'all are killing it. And we're big on manifestation on this podcast. Yeah. So we like to think what we vocalize comes true. Okay. So I already see the success for both of you. Thank you. You're yeah. We're going to manifest that. Yeah. yeah, we are. We're manifesting it. Well, you have to put in the work too, but yeah. we see it Dang for it. you. Okay. I like it. I know. Shit. Was that the first time you guys have heard that word before? What is no, this? I, uh, <laughs> we, listen, we listen to your, we're avid followers. So. <laughs> well, I think that concludes our intro segment. Yeah. Shall we get into the taste test? Absolutely. We're going to pretend like we didn't just sip a full no. <laughs> OG oh, you were drinking? classic. Oh, you were. No, no oh, not at oh, all. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah. Sneak peek. Okay, so we will be right back with a taste test to dive into every single flavor of yeah. Cape Codder. All right, let's do it. Okay, so now we're going to do a little taste test with you guys. We're going to pretend like we have no idea what these flavors taste like. Love it. <laughs> and I want, or I think the goal is for you guys to just give a little backstory, like share maybe how the flavor came to be, or like just give a little description, yeah. and then we'll taste it, we'll give our thoughts, and at the end, we can kind of share our favorites in order. Love Sound it. good? First, I would just like to draw to everyone's attention how gorgeous these colors are. <laughs> so you also just gave some background whenever you line up the colors. Yeah. What did you say it was? Yeah, so the whole theme is supposed to be beach, water, sunset. Beach, water, sunset. Is there anything better? The answer is no. No. <laughs> okay, so kick us off with the classic <clears throat> cotter. Yeah, so classic cotter, our original. Um, you know, really, uh, the backstory behind this one specifically is the brand itself. Um, you know, Cape Cotter, the drink, has been existing for many years in New England. It's been my family drink for all my life. As I said, I won't say when we started, but it was my first drink. <laughs> and, uh, 23 probably. <laughs> yeah. Give or take. Um, you know, that being said, um, you know, the, the mint is kind of a way to, to cut through the cranberry and have it provide that refreshing balance, very crisp finish. Uh, so we wanted to bring that to life. So it's a vodka cranberry mint. Um, it's not going to be too cranberry forward. It's going to be a nice balance. All right, let's crack her open. Let's, let's get it. sipping. Do you want so, me to? Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Can you do that? Yeah. ASMR. Yeah. 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 Still don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> this is giving QVC at the moment. <laughs> I love it. Um, An interactive podcast. And look at the color, too. Right look now. at the color. Here, swap out here. You, you, one thing we note <clears throat> all the time is you pour out a lot of these drinks that are in the market, and even though they're flavored like blueberry or black cherry, you know, they come out clear. So like when, when you see all natural, be very cognizant of that and, um, and, and research it. And I think when we say all natural, we mean it. This is cranberry and mint. And so that you have the really pretty r like red pinkish mm -hmm. liquid. And that's the cranberry. Yeah. Love I love because that. Because it is cranberry. Yeah. yeah. Cheers. Should we cheers, cheers for every single one? <laughs> yeah. <So. laughs> cheers, guys. Kevin and I are like, hey. Yeah. <laughs> clink, clink. So good. So this one is super refreshing to yes. me. Yes. Yep. Even out of the can. I mean, usually I'm just drinking it in a can, but yeah. you guys also have directions to. That's one of my favorite oh, parts. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I feel like we also need to mention the can itself. Yeah. Totally. So this classic one pairs well with lobster rolls in lazy beach days. Yep. <laughs> How perfect. It's so cute. Yeah. yeah. But I love the way that it's carbonated, but it's not too carbonated like it's not going to fill me up and make me feel bloated the way that most seltzers do yeah. and i know this is a canned cocktail not a seltzer correct yes. is that how you'd classify technically, it correct. technically so it's technically a cocktail because the ingredients in the can are are all, all natural so it's like taking cranberry juice and a mint puree and vodka and putting it into a glass it has a it has a seltzer type feel to it because it's so light yeah um so we kind of we kind of straddle that line of of ready to drink cocktail, but also a spirited seltzer. I was gonna say like light carbonation, low ABV, yep. just super crisp is where where we lean in. And it doesn't have that weird aftertaste yeah. that a lot of the classic seltzers that you just get off the shelf totally. have. 
it just, it just goes yeah. down so smooth. It's also very complex, and I feel like we can't talk this long about every single flavor. But <laughs> <laughs> this is just the intro. <laughs> but this is the well, intro, generally. Well, the last thing I will say is, like, like for so long, people have tried to understand the difference between, like, a like a malt-based beverage and a, and a, a vodka-based or a spirit-based beverage. That, that education is still happening. So, like, you have that transition that's going on right now, but also people are becoming so much more health conscious. Yeah. So that metallic, synthetic aftertaste that you might – you know, remember, um, people are getting smart to that, yeah. and so they're they're seeking that that cool, calm, refreshing taste. Love it. Yeah. Shall okay, so, we? So I finished oh. mine. So you guys better <laughs> tip your spot. <laughs> but it's just nice that you can actually taste both flavors. Like you yes. get the cranberry to start, and then the flavor that's left in your mouth is mint. Which like who wouldn't want that? There are chapters. There are chapters. Yes. <laughs> Okay, introduce this next one. Oh, yeah. This is Bay Breeze, which is spelled B-A-E Breeze. Mm -hmm. Better than anyone else. Ooh. <laughs> right? Look at you with your acronyms. I know. I feel like... I thought, I thought it was before anybody else. Before anybody else. <laughs> or is it better? I think it's We're better. really bad with acronyms. It's kind of the same, yeah. though, right? Okay. Right? It's definitely the same. I don't know. Okay. Anyway, to the drink. So this is a uh, <laughs> this is a vodka grapefruit cranberry drink. It, it kind of mirrors the Greyhound cocktail, if you all have ever had that on on the bar. And it's got that that tart that people seek, but again, not not too much tart where you're puckering your lips. Mm -hmm. Do people use pucker? <laughs> yeah. Thank you. That was a loud opening. That was great. Yeah. Good for the ASMR. Good grape The ASMR will pick that up. Yeah. So I, I mean, I think. The key introduction here is to highlight the liquid color again. It actually yeah. resembles the color of the cans. Natural cranberry and the combination of the natural grapefruit coming into play here. Cheers. Cheers. Court and I are manifesting <laughs> our cheers. Yeah, we are. <laughs> it's an air cheers. Yeah, This one's honestly. also smooth, very light. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I've had this one the least amount out of all of them. Which Can you remind me which ones are in the variety pack? So it would be classic, Bay Breeze, Perfect Storm, and Mermaid's Tail. Okay. So Love three it. different spirits, two Those cans ones. each. Yep. Okay. I hit the AM SMR, hopefully. It's so good. I feel like people either love grapefruit or yeah. hate grapefruit, but this is like the perfect amount that I genuinely think anyone would appreciate this drink. Like I, mm -hmm. sometimes it's too bitter, but yeah. you said it perfectly, it's smooth. Yeah. Yeah, it's not overpowering at all. Yeah. There's a flavor for everybody. Yes. Exactly. And honestly, something to note too is, I don't know if it doesn't exist or if it's just not in my world because I haven't bought it before, but a lot of variety packs are just for one, like vodka or yeah. tequila, whereas this has vodka, tequila, it has rum as well, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The variety pack. Mm -hmm. So it's literally something for everyone. Yeah. People, people can sample some, like a variety pack and play around and see what they like and then you can go order a four pack of that, yeah. that flavor. And I think that makes it easier if you have never tried Cape Cotter before oh. as well. You don't need to commit to one flavor. Mm -hmm. But that is not to say you should sleep on the yeah. ocean break. Um, I will Seriously. say this is Joe's absolute favorite. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's a huge fan of the Yeah, plug. we save all of those for him because yes. he's so protective over it. Yes. You were just like saying like, you still should love your fifth child. Yes, yes exactly. <laughs> you can't have favorites, even exactly. though we are going to say favorites. Totally, later. okay, yeah, yes. that's what we do. And we're, the calorie count is very intentional too. So like we, like we said, attributes are under, under 100 calories, four grams of carbs or less, gluten-free. You know, but some of them are less than 100. So it's, you know, Ocean Break is like a blueberry fresco. It's mm -hmm. 94 calories. It's super light. Uh, Perfect Storm, I think, is 97. Bay Breeze is 98. So we really dialed so it Joe in. Joe Skinny is what you're saying. <laughs> He's health conscious. He is. Season, season, let's go. What does this one pair well with? Do you know off the top of your yeah, head? Yeah, this one is, uh, awesome. fit, no, it's fish tacos and fireworks. Oh. Oh, yeah. fish tacos and fireworks. Yeah. It really just takes you to the moment, which is exactly yeah. what you were trying to do. For sure, for sure. Next up, I'm really excited for this one. Yeah. Mermaid's Tail. Mermaid's Tail. No, I was going to say Mermaid's Tail. You were going to say it too. <laughs> I think we were at the Squire oh. in uh, Chatham. Oh, I know. Oh, All right, fine. We were both there. Okay. <laughs> We were about six deep at that time, but I mean, yeah. mermaid's tail, uh, like T A L E. Yeah. So we want people to tell their tale, find their mermaid yeah. or merman, mm -hmm. uh, wherever they may be. Uh, this one is a uh, tequila watermelon <laughs> mint, super smooth drinker. This came out on Cinco de Mayo, and we didn't even realize we timed it that way. <laughs> Which is a miss. It was definitely a miss on our end. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
two we were like, wait, it's Cinco de Mayo and this is tequila. Oh, yeah. Oh. Okay. I was, I was, yeah. You'll get them next time. Yeah, I was, exactly. I was sampling with a fan and she was like, I'm looking for tequila because it's Cinco de Mayo. I was like, yes, and that's exactly why we, we, we released it today. <laughs> but no, I want to I wanna go back to, to Will kind of explaining the backstory of Mermaid's Tale. It's him and I and his now fiance um, at the Squire. <laughs> and uh, we were trying to figure out the name for you know, this flavor. We had, we had figured out it was going to be watermelon and mint, of course, with tequila. And we just didn't have the name yet. And honestly, that's the most fun part. Mm-hmm. You're sitting there, you're having beers. And I think as I look back on all of our drink names and the sessions and the time we took to craft each name, this one was my favorite. Mm-hmm. Um, because we probably polished off at least six beers. <laughs> Because the squire doesn't sell cotter, <laughs> plug, plug. Um, <laughs> and uh, you know we were just going back and forth, and some of the names we thought of in that moment, like I wish we actually wrote them down because oh. they were ridiculous. Like I would oh l- love yeah. to hear them. I wish you. Do you, you remember any? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, do you remember any, Kevin? We were just we were going so many different directions. We were like green, gray, uh, tequila, green plant, and we just keep, <laughs> just like keep riffing, and it just like eventually comes, and I was just like. Mermaid, and then it just kept going from there. Yeah, um, and well, uh, I think yeah. you named this one perfectly. Yeah, same. I remember <clears throat> right when we um, were we were chatting before you guys were coming out with it, and we were yeah. saying, "Oh, you guys don't have a tequila, tequila. one yet." Yes. Like, well, it's coming. Yeah. It's being released really soon. So this was probably the most anticipated. Yeah. One of your cotters, mm-hmm. and it did not disappoint. Yeah. So let's try it, yeah. but... Tell your tale. Spoiler alert, this is my favorite. <laughs> Find your mermaid, tell your tale. Cheers. 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 <laughs> it's perfect. It's just so good, it's so good. The, the watermelon, it's light, it's sweet, but it's not sweet, sweet at yeah. all. I had a super sweet cocktail last night, woke up with a headache. Like It's never that sugary yeah. at all. And I mean, I'm just a tequila girl through and through. Totally. Mm-hmm. So. And even the color is my favorite. Well. I know. Like, this, is really, this is a 11 out of 10 for me. Nice. Yeah. It's, wow. it's delicious. I think this might have to be my favorite, but we, we have, have to try yet. all the other ones. Oh my God, you're yet. so right. You're so right. Uh, Court, we talked to you. Ocean see. Break just, I mean, it's just down there. It's we just have, like yeah. 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 We're getting 11 out of 10s and favorites already. Oh my goodness. No, like, maybe hey. we can cut that part out. <laughs> No, it genuinely is so yeah. good. And it's the perfect for the summer. Yeah. It, is. It, is. it is. And perfect leads perfectly into the perfect storm. Well, before we get oh. there, oh. it pairs well See with... See what I did there? Oh, oh, oh yeah. What does oh. it pair well uh, with? Backyards and barbecues. Backyards Aww. and barbecues. Yeah. Think about that watermelon rind you're yeah. having with that exactly. barbecue. Yeah. yeah, nice no, watermelon salad, some barbecue going. Mm. Nice summer day. Mm. This was actually a Taylor Bramhall um, call out, uh, who, who's call the out. third member of our yes. team. Uh, one of our partners, he's fantastic, but he was like, I think of watermelon, I think of backyards and barbecues. And we didn't even think, so we, we didn't do anything else from then on out. It was backyards and barbecues. Yeah. So. I love it. it There's so much, much creativity that goes into and every thought. single one of these. Yeah. All right, transition us into Perfect Storm. Perfect Storm, one of our original four. So I think that's important to highlight. So the original four, classic Bay Breeze, Perfect Storm, and Ocean Break. So two vodkas, two rums. Perfect <laughs> Why, Storm. Did you see that? <laughs> you show the original. Oh, perfect, Please. perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I missed it. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> The ASMR only works in the when the sounds created. The files are in the computer. So Perfect, Perfect Storm was another fun one in terms of you know how we got to the name. You know, at that point we were all in separate places, just kind of coming up with a lot of our names, our ingredient combinations, and how I remember, and I'll let Will kind of tell his story was you know, us coming to agreement on like a dark and stormy style drink. Something with rum, kind of gingery. We landed on white rum, uh, ginger and lime, and then, you know, nautical. Um, you know, connecting the dots, perfect storm. Perfect. It's New a drink England. about yeah. as good as George Clooney looks. Yes. Oh. In the movie Perfect Storm. Yeah. <clears throat> so. I love that. It's a fact. Fact. It's a fact. Complete fact. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to cleanse my palate really quick. But as we were voting on the name, I was like, Cheers. guys. Like, what about the perfect stormy? Like, a dark and stormy. True. Everybody, was, everybody just looked at me like, Kevin, no. Too cheesy. Too cheesy. 
<laughs> so I got voted on that one. It could have worked, worked, but Perfect Storm is great. This one is unbelievable. It, so before the Mermaid's Tale came out, the Perfect Storm was by far, without a doubt, like my top, top, top. Yeah. I always just gravitated towards it. And I've mentioned this on the podcast before, but to me, I think it's the ginger. Yeah. But it doesn't taste soda-like to me. I literally feel like I'm having a health drink. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not the only one that said that. Everyone that I make try it, they're like, yes, like yeah. this tastes so good, but it tastes healthy. Like I feel amazing yeah. as I'm sipping on it. Coach the stomach. Ginger. Cool. Yes. yes. It's so exactly. good for you. Exactly. And this, although it's, I guess my drink of comfort from like my childhood with my dad growing up after 21 of course was Bacardi and pineapple okay and this although it's not pineapple it gives me like that immediate like sensation like a tropical beverage on a vacation somewhere and yeah it does it does taste just like a ginger shot or something but something you'd enjoy as opposed to that yeah Yeah. (laughs) internally we've kind of nicknamed it the hot day mule Hot day meal. Uh, yeah. That makes sense too. It, just, it very much drinks similar to that and just very refreshing, very crisp, very balanced. And um, this is my favorite. I call it the porch pounder. You know, I've pound pounder. these on the porch all day long. <laughs> I've remained quiet on favorites every day. You know? We have one more we have to drink. <laughs> uh, we have to drink all these before we leave. <laughs> Wait, what is this one pair well with? Uh, sushi and sunsets. Oh, I knew this one because yeah. I look at the can so often. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, so sushi good. is some of my favorite food, so mm, it all just nice. makes sense. It mm-hmm. does make sense. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. That yeah. entire journey you described makes absolute sense. Yeah. 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 I, I had a I had a, a California roll today from Roach Brothers in uh, downtown <laughs> Boston. Shout out to Roach Brothers. They carry us. Go go get it there. They do. That's my closest one. <laughs> oh, really? That's where I get my Connor. Well, there you go. <laughs> 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 okay, last but certainly not least, no, even no. though she didn't make the variety pack, <laughs> which I sure. do feel personally offended by, yeah. Yeah. but we have Ocean Break. Would you like to crack that one open? Yeah, I would actually. The honor. Oh. <laughs> Me. Oh That's how you do an ASMR. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Splatter. So this is the prettiest color, I think, of all the drinks. It just oh. it comes out a nice rich blue, but again, <clears throat> because it's just it's super light, so it's kind yeah. of it's kind of wild. But come on, yeah, white rum, blueberry, and lemon. So I think it's important to share. So each cocktail is carbonated equally. I will say with Ocean Break, the blueberry definitely grabs a hold of that carbonation. So it's more of like a subtle carbonation in this one is how it's going to drink. Mm. So very smooth, to Will's point, kind of that blueberry fresca style. Mm-hmm. I love it. Do you guys remember that? Cheers. That drink, fresca. I actually used to love fresca. Cheers. That was my only soda. I didn't grow up being a... <laughs> little lemon finish. I love it. I love anything with lemon in it. Yeah, the honestly. lemon does come through in yeah. the perfect amount. Yeah. It's so good. It gives, like, blueberry lemonades, but lighter, yes. in my opinion. And I think like having that third ingredient is important because it cuts through a lot of the flavors that can be super strong that you find with other brands. Like watermelon and cranberry individually are really powerful flavors. And you know, that third ingredient provides that balance that just to your point on how you introed it, very refreshing, good finishes. And uh, also like a a third level of intrigue. Like a lot a lot of the products you'll find on the shelves have like one primary ingredient. And so we wanted like that secondary ingredient that's kind of like, ooh, what what, what might th- that be like? And yeah. Like that's, and again they have layers. Like you know, some of them when we when we taste with people, like they say they taste the mint first or the cranberry first. Mm-hmm. It's so wild to see the difference in people's palates. True. Like that that is I think probably one of the, the biggest takeaways. Yeah. We've we've heard it all over two years. <laughs> yeah. 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 Someone said, yeah, I won't even go into that. What did someone say? Tell us, Will. For a different episode. (laughs) Okay, once we stop recording. (laughs) Some people actually taste the spirit. Other people don't. We like to say, because this is how I perceive it, is the spirit is definitely in the background and the the ingredients in the can are in the foreground. Other people get the spirits first. But it's so wild to see the difference in the way people, uh, people's taste buds work. I taste yeah. it similar to you. I feel like the spirit comes 
last if it even comes through honestly yeah. like I get the flavors of what I'm supposed to be tasting totally. and yeah. I think that's why it's so enjoyable to drink you're not making a face with every yeah. sip like yeah. you are with a lot of other beverages so yeah. okay so this does conclude our taste test okay. we tasted all five cotters but the real question is what's everyone's favorite I want to do a slight plug okay there will be one coming next year. Ooh. Yeah. Can we get a can we get a it will any be, sort it of will. How do we, how do we get think them about it? it. Um, it would be tequila. Love. Ooh. Ooh, that's all we need. That's all we need. <laughs> we can't be, get a color, can we? Well, no. The other hand I'll give you is okay. it's inspired by a certain hour of the day. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be called <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just did that. Wow, Ooh. that sounds really good. Oh, I can't it's wait. Really I'm fire. so excited. Yeah, it's okay. absolutely lit. Do people say lit still? Eh? Sure. Yeah, I say yeah. lit all the time. Yeah. All the time. Unfortunately, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> In very inappropriate settings. <laughs> nice. Okay, so since we can't taste the one that's coming down the line yeah. for now, Sorry. what? <laughs> <laughs> is... No, we love a sneak peek. Yeah, yeah. For sure. <laughs> What, what's your favorite? So. If you can choose a favorite child. Yeah. You know, um, yes, I can. So for me, um, just because, you know, I'm so passionate about it, just inherently, classic is, is my number one, always will be, no matter what flavor comes out next. Um, you know, it just holds like a special it's your place. Firstborn. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There we go. Firstborn. First yeah. <laughs> yeah. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Firstborn for sure. Okay. Um, mine still, as much as Mermaid's Tale's kicking butt, is Perfect Storm. Fair enough. Okay. So I honestly have a tie between Mermaid's Tale and Perfect Storm. I feel like, I've, of course, I'm going to say Mermaid's Tale. It's the new shiny yeah. tequila. It's green. It's my favorite color. It's delicious. It's watermelon. I have a million great things to say about it. But I do think Perfect Storm might be, you know, tr it's it's my first. Yeah. It's my first <laughs> yeah. favorite. Yeah, so I get that. So they're kind of a tie. Yeah, I was going to say Perfect Storm too, but I can't be a follower with both of you. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. Honestly, I'll give the child that's not in the variety pack some love. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's, nice. such, that's, that's really such nice. Layup. We appreciate it. No, I absolutely adore all of them. I would say Ocean Breeze and Perfect Storm. Yeah. I think take like priority over Mermaid's Tale in my mind. Just because yeah. I love wow. Yeah, I don't know. I love that. I love them all equally. Yes. But As do we. if I had to. Yeah. Alright, I'm gonna show my lineup really quick. I feel like this is like one of those like magicians with yeah, the house. Right. Wow. This wow. is my lineup. From right to left or left to right. From the camera looking left, left to right. I was say, we could have just like oh, wow. turned the camera because it was in the exact same order. Oh, no, I know classic was in it. That's true, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Podcast engineering. Wow. I didn't even think about that from the camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, what's yours? Okay. Oh, okay. All right. All right, Kevin, you're Kevin. honest. <laughs> <laughs> They're all my favorites. <laughs> Love to see it. <laughs> Oh, or come on. Like, you want to tell me? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mine is do Ocean Breeze, then Perfect Storm, then Mermaid's Tail. Yes. Notice exactly. they're all empty here if you're here. Yeah, to right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, fun. So we've entered the final segment, if you will, of the episode, which is rapid fire questions. Okay. First question being selfishly asking. Ash and I are best friends and business partners and co-hosts. Y'all are brother-in-laws. Mm -hmm. What is your favorite part about working together and what is your least favorite part of working together in business? Should in the hot first? seat. In the hot yeah. seat, yes. <laughs> Want me to go first? No, I can go first. <laughs> um, Just take a long pause. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta build up the dramatics. So there's my least favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Quick answer right there. Um, no, I think my favorite part is, you know, being able to do something every day and share the wins, you know, with somebody very important with uh, to you. Um, you know, I think as I alluded to earlier in uh, in the podcast, you know, 
having the friendship before and being able to bring Cape Cod to life and literally be doing the same thing together each day and sharing in those wins, like no matter how small, no matter how big, it's equally as important to continue to like drive the morale together and to build the brand. Um, because ultimately, you know, it's not only just our relationship, but now being able to, you know, balance Taylor and the three of us and just how close knit the three of us are. Um, it's really working with my brother-in-law and another brother at this point too. Um, and I think that's important to, to highlight as well. Working with family, it, it expounds, right? Um, you know, we are a web and, you know, the three of us internally and our significant others, we're all bound together to make this happen. And that comes with sacrifices. And I think, uh, you know, it's a, it's a challenge um, on a daily, weekly basis to balance, you know, most importantly, all of the personal things we have going on together, um, but also the business priorities uh, that come with running a business, running yeah. a brand. So, um, you know, I think that's the most challenging piece of all of it. Yeah. Well, love you, Barbara Callahan. I agree with that. Well, uh, it's love you, Emily O'Leary, as well. Jeez. So, <laughs> nice plug. <fun. laughs> but but, but I, I think, like, Kevin hit on the nose. I mean, yeah. like, every day, like, we don't even think. Like, we just go, and the day flies by. And, you know, we're putting cases on shelves, yeah. and we're seeing consumers love what we're doing. And there's nothing more fulfilling than to feel that consumer love what you've created <clears throat> and then when you kind of double click into that and realize you did this with somebody who's who your sister loves and who is basically part of your family this you're part of our family um uh is such an awesome awesome feeling and um you know i think getting into business with family certainly has gone wrong in many cases but i think when when rain or shine success or not like we're going to be best friends. So yeah. it's, it's like okay. such an awesome thing. Uh, the, the thing that we, that I don't really like is, um, you know, he, he doesn't like my drinks when I make them myself. Um, he doesn't like my food when I make it myself. And, and that's a, that's a, that's a to show. be fair. It's, it's very seldom that I get the opportunity to taste both of those. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I thought you were going to say something else that you shared at Granite Links. You guys live. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh living together. You guys live a little too close. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh no. We, 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 and that's the opposite. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was awesome. I mean, cottage in Dennisport, our spiritual home. You know, and and and, and like there was a five mile an hour wind, and it felt like the place was going to burn, like you know, blow to the ground. So, you know, you, you get really close to somebody very fast in that place. Um, and holy oh, shit, Kevin, was that? You were lovely. We had a great time. <laughs> no, he was just saying that Newport was an upgrade from where yeah, you guys yeah, started yeah. in the space situation. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so final question we have yeah, for you guys is working in such a fun industry, alcohol, booze, you're out, you're socializing. Yeah. How do you find a good balance here at You Can Do Both podcast? We're all about finding balance in your everyday life. So work hard, play hard, have your drink, but also make sure that you're having your me time and taking care of yourself. So how do both of you find that balance working in this industry? The fun part about working in booze is that you're getting people in their happy p place. Like they are most likely getting off the clock. And yeah. to be able to be a part of that um, is awesome. Uh, but what you do is you find yourself in a lot of drinking occasions. So like it's all about finding the balance and knowing that you're in the booze industry, but also making sure that you are responsible throughout that. And <clears throat> because during the day, all you're doing is like, you know, you're working and, and you don't want to be hung over every day. Yeah, so like, true. you know, I find my balance by, you know, trying to get a good night's rest and, and getting fitness in every day doesn't happen. But, you know, that's, you know, eating that's decent food. Yeah. You know, you're at a lot of bars, so you're eating like fried food and, mm. <clears throat> you know, so... Um, finding that balance in your diet and your sleep and your exercise, I think is important. It's just being a human being, but that's yeah. what I would say. No, I mean, and just to really expand on that, I think it's, you know, understanding when and where you need to lean in. Um, so really like planning out your week, planning out your month and understanding, you know, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I know I have to be at a promotion 
here, and I know that's going to require me to do X. So leading into that, I need to be sure that you know I'm getting the rest I need. I'm I'm taking care of myself and taking care of the work um, in advance of that. Um, so you know I think anybody will kind of attest um, in the beverage industry specifically, you know, alcohol be bev um, or bev alk, I should say. Um, you know, it's difficult and, you know, it comes with challenging challenges every day being in front of not only your own brand, but of others. Um, so I think it also takes our team together to understand, you know, when we need to rotate in and out of, um, you know, events, samplings, sales, whatever it is. And, um, you know, being able to balance, um, energy and right. commitments yeah. together yeah. is important. I'll, I'll say this too, because yeah. like we've been talking about this a lot, talking yeah. about family. You know, w you need to recharge and you need to spend time with family. And it's if you don't do that, then there's going to be something out of balance. Yeah. So like it's all about finding balance. And, you know, the whole point of your podcast is you can do both. Uh, I think you can do both or many things if you spend time with family, you spend time with balance yep. yeah and and then when you're it's time to grind you rise and shine and then like when it's time to go to your family like you go to your family and that's i think that's something that we we pride ourselves on taylor you yeah. and me and and and, and and you know the last plug i will say i mean the the fun of having your own brand is it's your own brand and there is a certain energy that comes with that inherently um and you know i think that's the best part about what we do is, you know, I think the burnout exists, but the recharge is faster because, you know, you, you take that time off, you take that time away from the brand and doing what we're doing every day. You're like, I want to get back. Like I'm, I'm ready to go and I'm, I'm ready to be back in front of the people that I built this brand for. And, uh, you know, I think that's an important kind of shadow of Preach. what we're doing. Yeah. That's I us. love it. That's literally yeah. us yeah. right now. We're like itching to like get back to season three. Yeah. But I actually just thought of one last question that kind of ties the two it. together. Um, for anyone out there that has an idea for a business and maybe they're fearful that it's like a saturated market already. Yeah. Do you have any advice of like a mindset that you like live by or like just any advice to get that person itching to start whatever their idea is. Yeah, I think I'll just start. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, when, when Will and I like really first started to build out this idea, as Will mentioned, we love booze, but that's about all we knew about the industry. Um, so we really moonlighted Cape Cotter for probably up to a year before we rolled off our, our full-time corporate jobs. But the first six months of that was literally fact-finding, learning as much as we could about the alcohol industry and connecting with as many people as we could. Um, so the biggest recommendation I would have for anybody looking in any industry itself, even if it is an industry you're currently in, you don't know everything. And it's important to spend the time fact-finding and meeting the people that are going to help you launch and build that brand ultimately because connections lead to connections and that is the biggest story of why we are here like at this point year two watching new flavors yes. <laughs> I would be so happy if that was the eventual name. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually the name. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I think like think of a lifetime if you're going to make a bet. Like make a bet and then be smart about building it out with research and uh, data and consumer insights. <clears throat> and and then when you have it to a point where you've got a you know a great concept and you've sized up the business uh, and and the total addressable market and the pieces you need to have in place to actually make it work, and you have the money, do it. Like don't even think about it because I like, I remember that time where I was like, are we actually doing this? And like someone said, like do it. And I was like, all right, <laughs> jump over the ledge because <clears throat> there's nothing worse than getting in my mind, looking 30, 40 years from now and being like, you know, in my corporate job for that, that long. And yeah. then realizing that I had a moment to take a bet on myself and my brother-in-law and I didn't. So take a bet, be smart about it, do your research, find the money, rock and roll. 
Love it. So good. And final, final, final question. Okay. Where can everybody find you guys in store, on social medias? Where can they shop Cotter? Yeah, I mean, uh, 300 plus accounts across Massachusetts, retail, bars, golf, resorts, wherever your drinking occasion is, odds are we're there, if not chirp. Um, Wait, explain the concept. The chirp squad. So, the chirp yes. squad, yes. We, we love a good chirp squad, so... <laughs> If you go out and you buy a Cape Codder after this episode and you love it, if it's not sold at your local retailer, uh, restaurant, bar, wherever your, your drinking establishment is, chirp them, tell them to buy it, and that way they sell it at those places. Yeah, you can also find us, like if you go to our website, www.capecodder.com, C-A-P-E-C-O-D-R.com, there's a Find Us tab, Yep. classic Find Us tab, but uh, type in your town, <clears throat> they'll tell you what's nearby, Yeah. Um, and uh, go get it. All, if you uh, like it, cool, if not, that's cool too. <laughs> <laughs> All socials at Cape Codder, C-A-P-E-C-O-D-R. Definitely check out our TikTok, we're trying to grow it, um, so... Give us a follow there. We love that. Definitely right. will. <laughs> Definitely will. Well, guys, thank yeah. you so much for coming on. This yeah. was such a pleasure. It was long overdue. Yeah. And we can't wait to continue finding our cape with you guys. No, thank you guys for having us. This has been awesome. We really appreciate everything you've done for the brand. And we look forward to this year together. Yeah. Absolutely. One final yeah. cheers. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Oh, my God. Oh, my God.